In this tutorial, we're going to take a bit of a closer look at subsurface lines and how they behave on component types in OpenVSP. Now, a subsurface line is basically either a constant U or a constant W line on any type of component. So on a wing, because the U direction goes along the span, you can expect a constant U line to basically be for all W. So if we click on this, you can see that for all W at this value of U, we've captured the surface here. So this is kind of like a slice or an airfoil that just snaps it all around. For a W line, it's saying for all U, I want to highlight this value of W. And so with each of these, if we move them around, you can see that we can kind of manipulate them so that they either tag greater than or less than some section of the surface with a certain uh, parameter. So in this case, you can use something like a value of 0 0.5 and either for export or analysis in OpenVSP, you can say that a certain subsurface or region of this wing has different parameters in say a parasite drag analysis or in CompGeom. Similarly, if we had a constant U line and we add another one, we can say that for this strip of the wing, we've got say different parameters. Now, if we come to the stack, you can see that subsurface lines behave very similarly. In this case, we have this constant U line that's right now in between these two cross sections. So if we move this way, you'll see it becomes more circular. Back here, it's closer to that rounded rectangle and eventually we collapse to a point. And so we bring this around and again, it's just for all W, this value of U. And so a subsurface line is what you actually use to flag, say, some region of a stack or in a cell as being an inlet or a flow through section. And so in this case, if we were to come in and do an analysis and say that we want to ignore this section of the component for parasite drag or in wave drag, it would treat it as an inlet. And you can do it similarly on the back for an outlet or an exhaust. Now, this constant U is just showing you how the shape is changing for these values of U along the body. If we look at the W, it's saying for this value of W for all U. So it's tracing that constant line all the way across this body. Now, because we have access to things like skinning and changing the way that the constant W lines are traced on a body type component, these can behave just a little bit differently. So let's jump to a hidden view here and take a look at how this section is following along on this interpolated spot. And because we have, say, a uh, rounded rectangle here on the back, if we start to skew this somewhat, you can see that it's staying connected here on this point of the section. So that is the W value back here, but it's being moved around on this body. So it's getting a good bend into it. And similarly, if we were to come around and follow say the subsurface line, let's set this at 0.25, or better yet, let's put it at 0.5 so we can see it a little better. Now we're following this feature line of the component. So watch what happens if we come to skinning on section three here, and we are actually going to start changing around, say the slew angle. So we're only changing the slew on this side, but notice how the subsurface line is being manipulated along with that feature line. This is changing how the subsurface line or the W values of this surface are being lofted. And so it gives you a visualization of where this happens along the surface. So if we move this and start to adjust where it happens in W, you can see how that slew at that point in W is being interpolated and adjusted in between these cross sections. So not only is it a handy way for identifying different sections of a component or a different sections of the surface rather, it's also useful for identifying how the different feature lines are bending and behaving, not just by going into a hidden view, but getting the actual Bezier curve that is defining the surface.